What's up, YouTube? Is this the perfect backpack for the minimalist traveling photographer who wants both style and something budget conscious? <laughs> Alright, Isaac coming at you today with a video review of the K&F Concept Backpack. They label this the uh, waterproof camera backpack. The number is the KF13.080 and it will run you about a hundred bucks on Amazon. Uh, I have to admit I've been kind of interested in the company K&F uh, Concept. Uh, sometimes also called Kent Faith Concept. And I've looked at uh, a number of their products um, over the last year or two because they seem to be occupying a really interesting niche. They are a Chinese company manufacturing in China, but at pretty high quality. So they offer budget solutions uh, for people who are a little bit frugal, and you probably know that that's me to a T, uh, but who don't want to compromise necessarily so much on quality. Uh, originally I purchased one of their, um, uh, well I actually have it here, one of their sort of um, le uh, filter wallets. This is it right here. Just a simple little wallet because it was cheap and I just needed something to hold some filters in for me while, you know, when I go out shooting landscapes and that kind of stuff. And uh, once I received that product, I realized it was actually pretty good quality. So I was intrigued about their backpacks. And uh, in fact, you know, shopping for a new backpack, I, my review of the, um, the in-case DSLR sling probably let you know that, you know, the sling is good for some things, but it's not good for everything. So I was in the market for a good uh, camera backpack, and there are a lot of really cool backpacks out there, but some of them are incredibly pricey. Uh, I love Peak Design. I have uh, some of their products, but the Peak Design Everyday Pack, which you know I was lusting after, is about two hundred and sixty dollars, and I just couldn't justify spending that amount of money. And uh, consistently, when I was looking through Amazon and other places, I was coming across KNF Concept, them, Manfrotto, and a few other uh, manufacturers making what seemed like decent quality but budget bags, budget backpacks. It just so happens a buddy of mine reached out to me just as I was about to purchase this very bag. Uh, he does. He also has a YouTube uh, channel doing reviews, Ray's Real Reviews. Check him out. I'll link him down here in the in the comment section. And uh, he said, "Hey, you know, KNF Concept has been reaching out to me, looking for people to review their products, and they'll provide the products free of charge." So, full disclosure, KNF Concept did send me this bag free of charge, but I was going to buy it anyway, man. It was in my Amazon uh, shopping cart, and I was just hemming and hawing about whether I should pull the trigger because it's budget, but it's still 100 bucks, right? Now, they did me a solid by sending this out, and I'm going to do you a solid by giving you an honest, totally true, real review of this bag. Now, I like to review bags after I've used them for a period of time, um, but I'm kind of excited about this one. I've had it about three weeks now, and I've used it on three consecutive weekends for different things. And uh, I think I got a pretty good feel over what it's like to, to own this bag, what it's like to use this bag, what its limitations are, but what it, its um, possibilities that it affords you are as well. And uh, just very quickly at the beginning, I'm going to talk about the, the, the basic styling and the functionality of the thing. I'm going to flip the camera around as I normally do. And I'm going to go through all the pockets and show you how I've packed this out and show you a couple of different scenarios for how you might use this. Right up the top, TLDR. This is fantastic for, um, for a nice full day trip when you want to carry more stuff. You want to have your camera gear with you, uh, but you also need some other things, you know, windbreaker, water bottle, that kind of stuff. Um, but it could also be really uh, a good bag for single bag travel with a camera if, if you know how to pack very light. Are you a minimalist? We'll find out now. All right, I'm gonna show you right now exactly how it looks on me. Again, I'm about 5'8", 5'9", and let's say around 180 pounds. 
This bag, I think, uh, fits uh, somebody my size really nicely. If you're a little bit smaller, I think you could cinch it down and be fine. If you were bigger than me, if you were like, I don't know, six foot two or something like that, it might start to look a little small. All right, so the first thing is that the shoulder straps are nicely padded. They go around my neck really nicely. And there's a really nice uh, sternum strap that's adjustable. It can move up and down. But just on this little part of the shoulder straps here, there are two D-rings. So if you're the kind of person that likes to clip stuff to, the, <laughs> to your uh, shoulder straps, yeah, that's happening there. There's a really nice sort of flap keeper, a little uh, elastic jobby here so that your sternum strap isn't dangling around. There are two of them for these uh, dangly parts of the, the shoulder strap adjusters, so you could tuck them away like that. I like to adjust these a lot, however, as I, as I move throughout the day, so I'm not, I'm not typically having these things tucked away. So, this is what it looks like from the front. Here we have the sort of side view like that, and you can see I like to have it sort of right in the middle of my back, not too high up, but I also don't like to have the straps, you know, way down here like that, and the bag is kind of, uh, you know, hanging back from you. I like to have it sit reasonably tight on my body, okay? And this is what it looks like directly from the back right there. Um, I will say right off the bat that uh, I got compliments wearing this bag out. People really seem to, to like the styling of it, and that's one of the main things that sort of attracted me to it. I think in terms of actual styling, out there on the market right now, there's really only one other bag that kind of compares, and that is the uh, Kenora backpack from Portage Company, which right now is about 150 bucks, and I've read that it may go up after a few more months. It's a new bag. It was a Kickstarter, I believe, that came out. Now, the only difference really I could tell between these, th that bag and this one is I think the, the Kenora is a little bit bigger, and the materials might be a little bit uh, higher quality, including the fact that it uses real leather for the details. And this, as you'll see in a minute, when I show you some of the details, uses pleather. All right, that's kind of a little, meh, meh, little minus tick on the box right there. But as you can see, it fits pretty well. Uh, the main thing that attracted me to a bag like this is to a, as opposed to a traditional camera backpack was the fact that you could access the camera compartment much like the sling bag, right? I already know that I like that sling bag uh, kind of approach. And so I really like uh, this ability to get in here, to access my camera, you know, I'm gonna drop that on the ground, to be able to change lenses like that, you know, put the camera back in when I need it, to do that, zip it up, swing it around, and then I'm on the go again. Now, you'll see what I did when I did that. So I'll do it again, just so you can see. Traveling, see the shot, unclip. You have to pull the strap up on the left side to give you enough leeway to swing it so it comes all the way in front. If you don't pull the strap up, it's kind of dangling awkwardly off the side of your body. Now, when it's in this position, it's pretty stable, okay? I took this out uh, on a couple different events wine tasting with my family uh, around town and then actually to the women's march which took place last weekend and uh, it actually performed really great in those situations as I was using the camera that I'm filming you on now which is my my bigger camera with bigger lenses basically I went out with uh, that camera the 12 to 40 which is on it right now attached for wide and I had the um, the what is it on there, 75 to 300 to zoom in on the signs. And then I had a portrait lens, a 50 millimeter adapted lens. All fit perfectly in this bottom section of the bag, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, essentially, when you're wearing the bag, that's how you're gonna do it, all right? You're gonna, you're gonna just swing it around like that and you're gonna get into that camera compartment and you're gonna pull out your camera and do your shooting and you're swinging around back and hang it up. The other thing that you could do is access the other side which looks pretty much the same it's got the same kind of zip pocket like this but you can't get into the camera compartment instead you can get into a bunch of pockets here including what i'll show you in a little bit sd card pockets so this would be a really great place to put uh stuff that you need to get into fairly quickly all right fairly quickly uh and i'll talk about the pros and cons about this approach um being able to only access the camera compartment from basically swinging around your left side. So 
I'm gonna flip the camera around. I'm gonna show you uh, uh, the details now. All right, I got the camera flipped around now and I'm looking down at the bag here on, uh, on my little review table, all right? Uh, so I'm gonna go quickly over the exterior components, the quality, um, what I feel about the durability of the components, and I'm gonna show you the inside. So first things first is it's made out of this really very nice feeling uh, nylon fabric, right? It's got a it's got a little bit of a coarse texture to it. It feels very robust. It feels like it will wear well, and that it won't um, tear very easily at all. Uh, the KNF concept claim that this is waterproof. I haven't put that to the test yet. Um, I did put a little bit of water on it just to see what happens. It beat it up at first. I don't know how durable or how lasting that waterproofness is going to is going to be over time but off the bat it definitely feels very robust and like it will stand up to to a good amount of use the bottom of the bag is a sort of textured plasticized material black and that's really great because that's the side that you're going to put it down on all the time as you'll see it does stand up even when empty it's got structure to the bag which is really nice um, and i really like that about it that it stands up on its own um, it's got basically a pretty typical uh, sort of mesh pad area back here to keep it, I guess, somewhat aerated. It's got this air channel flow. You know, this part right here where it touches you, you're still going to sweat. That's just the nature of a backpack. You know, during the women's march, I, I had this on my bag for a couple hours while we walked around. It got quite hot. Um, you know, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad, but I definitely had a little bit of... A little bit of sweat happening here. No big deal though. Um, the shoulder straps themselves are also quite padded very well. They have the same kind of mesh on the inside and the same gray nylon, almost tweed-like material um, on this side. Uh, the straps are made from this really very nice nylon webbing, slick, you know, seat belt style is what I call. Uh, I call it. You feel it, and you just, it doesn't feel rough at all. It's just really, really smooth, and that's all the way down the front of the strap here, including uh, this uh, this part of the strap and your sternum strap here. The sternum strap has that little elastic sort of shock gate thing, which is pretty cool. These uh, these are magnetic, I tested them out, so these, these rings here appear to be steel, so that's pretty nice, really good quality here. Nylon buckles and pulls, so that's all really nice on this side. Um, on the other side, the detail is this pleather that I was talking about earlier. And I feel like that's the one sort of sacrifice you're making with this bag. You're not getting the feel and the look of real leather. If you want that, you're paying $50 more for that Kenora Portage, which is, uh, which is a very nice looking bag. It has some of the same, um, same pluses to, uh, as this bag, but 50 bucks, right? Can you live with pleather? That's up to you, all right? Uh, the hardware on this side is metal. It's non-metallic. I'm pretty sure it's probably some sort of coated, I don't know, brass or something like that. It's got this sort of chromish, dark chromish. The the uh, zipper pulls and these buckles are pretty much the same material as far as I can tell. Uh, the zippers are are pretty good. They are pretty high quality uh, zippers. Uh, What's the name of that company? SBS Zipper or something like that. That's the big competitor to YKK. And I'd say they're of the same quality as YKK. They're not particularly beefy, but they're not, they're not really weight-bearing. And I, and I think they're perfectly adequately sized for the task at hand. Um, there is uh, one really cool thing, feature about this bag, is that this top hatch here, this sort of clutter sack part of it, it looks like it, you have to undo these buckles, which would be a real pain in the butt, but you don't. It's magnets, all right? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, as you can see, however, the sort of way you fit them in there, I don't know, it's a little bit fiddly. So you got to get them kind of perfectly lined up. They do snap in place, and they do hold pretty well, but I'm scratching it up a little bit as I try to get it to fit exactly. Um, the buckles here are functional. They do let you move the this sort of place where the magnet is attached up and down if you have like a big load or if you really want to cinch it down. Now, these buckles, however, on the bottom, these buckles right here, these are functional real bu buckles that you do have to 
unbuckle and buckle again if you want to use this which is supposed to be the tripod holder and no it's not a tripod holder maybe if you're using a gorilla pod or something like that but honestly what this is is a yoga mat holder or maybe you roll up your jacket you can you can do that in there but honestly i'm just never going to use it because i it's too fiddly to be trying to buckle and unbuckle this thing and to slide whatever it is in there if you put a full-size tripod, even something small like this Mi Photo road trip that I'm filming on right now, it just feels totally unbalanced and not comfortable at all to wear. So if you're thinking you're carrying your tripod around on this bag, not this way. Maybe you could uh, open this up and slide it in through the top. That might be the way that you get around that one particular limitation. Uh, so on the outside of the bag, materials are all very good except for this pleather, and I'm not super keen on these... these the, the fact that all the buckles, like these buckles, you have to use as buckles. I would have preferred um, a sort of snap approach. Now, if that's something that really bothers you, uh, if you want this slick uh, webbing instead of this pleather, they do have another model that I was eyeing quite closely, and it is the KF uh, 13.076. Okay, and that's one that is not this gray material. It's like a it's like a dark blue material. It's a little bit more modern. This is sort of more classically styled. And then they have a third model, the KF 13.066, for uh, a little bit less money, uh, 89 instead of 99 or something like that, which is um, labeled as a travel backpack. And it has a more, I think it's probably also pleather, but like a lighter pleather, uh, like the top of it. It looks more like a classically styled clutter sack kind of a, kind of a deal. Um, so they do have a couple of different style options at around the same price point, which is which is pretty cool, all right? And if you want to go up to real leather, again, you got to pay more. And I think probably that Portage Kenora is the one for you. Let's take a look at the uh, pockets. So on the outside, really, there's just this quick access pocket over here, in which case I've got some, you know, sunblock. I've got my lens penses, you know, a little tiny. Uh, this is my my nine millimeter fisheye that goes with me everywhere because it's like nothing. You put your phone there. It's got some depth that goes all the way down to there but it's got no structure to it. It's just a flat pocket, just a flat pocket. The other outside pocket is on the, um, when you're looking at it this way, right, it's on this side, but when you're wearing it, it's on your right side pocket. And I showed you this briefly here. Now this is a really cool pocket. I particularly like this aspect to it right here. These are two Velcro stashes for your SD cards. And I love having that built into this pocket over here. Uh, then you have a couple of little stretch, me stretch mesh pockets and then one just sort of open pocket right here. And it's big enough to hold. I got a blower in there, um, yeah, you know, lens closet and that kind of stuff. But honestly, I'm not really keen on putting too much in these things because there's not a lot of structure to them. And I'm worried that anything important like a filter or something like that would fall out when I'm trying to fiddle around with this bag. Uh, the other deal is that this side right here there is no padding behind this this is just thin material right here so the only padding is actually in the door itself and this is quite thick padding but it is the only padding i kind of wish this stuff wasn't here it's you know what was just basically right into the interior compartment that might be more handy as a way to get maybe lenses on this side and your actual camera on the other side and in fact what i might do is cut this part out with some scissors and just you basically get right into the interior part of the bag. I showed you this before. This is the actual access pocket to get into your camera slot right here. I, um, you know, when I was taking it out, I was using the camera up there, but this is really nice. It's perfectly capable to put a, a camera with a lens on it facing down here. Your big DSLR might be a bit of a tight fit depending on what lens you're using. Uh, you might have to fit it in like this or something like that, but micro four thirds, not a problem at all. You can see here, I've also configured it so that I can hold a, actually a pretty big lens. This is the 75 to 300 down there at the bottom. And then I've got this sort of configured so that there's a little flap and I can keep other lenses back there. I've got two pancake style lenses that I've put back there. And that actually all together works as a pretty flexible solution for lens storage uh, in this particular camera, uh, camera bag. I can put this in like that, you can shove in the uh, all the straps that I want and zip it up and it's pretty darn well padded. The other neat thing 
about this is that uh, the whole camera cube comes out. So depending on how you want to configure this, it comes with quite a few of these sort of Velcro pads in there. You can make this a full box that you have to slide out the whole time, I mean every time. You can put dividers in any kind of configuration to make cubbies for your lenses in different places. You see I made this little door here so that I can actually have some things stored way back there that I don't want to get into that frequently but still give me a little bit of padding uh, for putting my camera when I put it in there, you know, like this so that it's all kind of nicely protected. The uh, slot without the pad on the inside uh, does still have some padding on the bottom, the back, and the front of the bag and the roof. Um, but as I said, the padding on this side is literally just this door. So if I undo this second slot, you can actually see my, like there's nothing. There's just little two pieces of very thin nylon, slick nylon between uh, my fingers and you know the outside world in that particular case. So just be aware of that um, particular notion. I think it'd be probably okay to, to go without the, the padded cube in here if you need to fit something. Uh, something larger. I don't know what that might be, but you know, if I'm putting my camera gear in here, I'm using their cube and their dividers, right? It also helps organize a little bit. And then the only other thing about this bag is the top compartment here. So, like I showed you, the magnets open up. You've got the drawstring right here, so it's kind of nice that things just don't fall out. And you've got a really nice top compartment here, and I'll show you how I've got this thing packed out right now. Windbreaker, it was a little chilly in the morning, right? I got a filter case. These are for cheap Ranger uh, filters. I've got the KNF filter case over here, like that. And another little lens case, all right? Plenty of material in there. I could still have room left over, easily to fit lunch, to fit a water bottle or anything like that. Now, that is one other downside to this particular bag. There's no dedicated water bottle pocket. You might be able to fit it in where I've got basically this blower if you wanted to do that, but I don't like that because it's right up against where my camera gear is with no padding. I don't want to shove my water bottle like a metal water bottle or something up against my camera gear. So it would have to go up here and that was fine. I just made sure that I had a water bottle that could stand up and was pretty watertight. Again, I'm not particularly keen on that because it then sits above my camera gear and, you know, if, I, if the bottle's not sealed up or something like that, it could leak down in there. Now with, with the EM1 Mark II, it's weather sealed, so it's not a big deal, but with other cameras, you know, yeah, I would definitely be a little bit worried about that. Now, you may be thinking, hey, cool, that's cool, that's cool, everything looks pretty good in there. There's two more sort of surprises. One is there's a laptop compartment over here, and I'll show you that in a second. It just goes the whole length of the bag. Down to the bottom, there, there is uh, a little bit of padding at the bottom of it, which is pretty neat. It goes all the way to the bottom, though it's not suspended above the bottom of the back. And the other thing is that the floor of this particular case between this bottom compartment is just separated by a divider that is itself Velcro. And I'm not going to pull it out because it's actually kind of a pain to do it, but you could totally remove that and you could have access to the full inside of the bag from the top all the way down. So that's really, really cool. It gives a lot of flexibility to this particular bag. And speaking of flexibility, I think this would make a really great single bag travel bag for the photographer who knows how to pack lightly, all right? So here, put in basic camera kit, a couple of lenses, and you know, in this case, EM10 Mark II, could be EM1. There's still plenty of space actually in that camera compartment over there. Now, what can I fit up top? All right, what can I fit up top? Well, firstly, laptop compartment. Here's my 13 inch laptop. I just have it in this little case because it keeps all my dongles, including the power cord and all of that kind of stuff. Fits in the slot just like so. Perfect, right? Here I've got two packing cubes. These are old Eagle Creek packing cubes the sort of smaller size of them. They can go right down in there like this. And this one can go right down on top like this. And here I have my dop kit, my rolled up, you know, toiletry kit, which can go right there on top like so. 
I can cinch it down whoosh, like this. And then I pull this over the top. Uh, I would probably have to uh, pull these buckles down a little bit, but even without doing that, I can easily, fairly easily, get the magnetic clasps to close. All right, so might change what's in this front pocket, what's in this side pocket, but what I've got in here is camera uh, with a lens attached. I've got a big lens on the bottom. I actually have two pancake lenses on the side in there. Basic cleaning cloths and all the SD cards and everything that you need. You can even fit a couple of filters. You can put your phone in there. And I've got enough clothes, if I know what I'm doing, to travel easily. Well, actually, indefinitely. If you know how to wash clothes in the sink, indefinitely. But Without that, probably for a good several days of travel for me, maybe three, four days without having to do any, any particular laundry um, with this setup. Now, should you buy this bag? Is this the bag for you? I think there's a stigma uh, for certain products that come out of China. And yes, there's still some quality control issues, but manufacturing over there is, is uh, the quality is increasing dramatically. Nobody blinks an eye about buying DJI drones, all made in China, Chinese company. Everyone talks about the OnePlus phone, right? Everyone talks about Xiaomi, you know, the, the uh, Mi, whatever it is, 3 camera, and the Mi phones, the Mi Fit bands, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff happening over there. And I think they're, they're trying to modernize, they're trying to be, you know, figure out what their game is. They're still playing a little bit of this emulation game where they're trying to look like the high-end products that are made in Europe or um, here in America or something like that. But they're actually pretty good <laughs> imitations, I think, at this point. And at some point, they're starting to innovate. I think KNF Concepts is one of those companies that's starting to do a little bit of innovation. They're giving you a pretty sweet spot, a nice compromise between low cost and reasonably high quality. Is it the best? Probably not. The construction is perfectly fine, right? You know, there's a handle here. Is it bar tack? No, but it's got some X braces over there. You know, it's not real leather. The piping and all that kind of stuff is pleather. It's going to wear. You're going to see, you know, threads and stuff come through this after a number of years. Probably. I don't know. Um, but it looks good. And this basic, the base material that they used is fantastic. I think this bag will wear pretty well. Will it last your entire life? Maybe not, all right? But will it last you several really good years? Will you get compliments? I got lots of compliments just wearing this out in a couple different locations. It's got some class to it. It's got some style to it. It's got some vibe to it, right? It's not just your standard, you know, um, nerd bag that's black and it's got some D-rings and, you know, all that stuff dangling off of it. I think it's pretty neat. Um, again, they, they were nice enough to send this out to me. I agreed to review the bag, give an honest review uh, in return for that. Uh, but I would definitely buy this bag myself. I think this is a really great um, urban bag. Are you traveling to, I don't know, uh, Berlin you know, for, 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 for a couple of days for business, but you want to bring a camera to, to, to snap a few pics, go to New York City, San Francisco, something like that? Yeah, this bag would definitely fit in. You could take it into your business meetings if that's what you do. Uh, but you could also easily take it out to, to the streets, to the cafe, all of that kind of stuff. And, and it would be really great. Uh, if I was going to go off-road a little bit, this may not be the bag for, for, for me. Right? And if, I, if I'm going to go do landscape photography and I need my tripod, this is not the bag for me. I would have to look at something bigger, more rugged, more outdoor styling. I, I really like their KF13076. That might be a, a slightly nicer pick. It's got a few additional details like an actual water bottle pocket, you know, on the side of the bag uh, that might make it a little bit better for, for long-term travel or for, for a little bit more roughing it travel. But for civilized travel, where you just want to carry one bag as carry-on and never deal with check-in and customs and all that kind of stuff, I think this is a solid choice, all right? So those are my thoughts on the KF13080, about a hundred bucks on Amazon. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, if you like this video, hit like. That really helps me know. Um, leave comments. I really like it when people leave comments. And of course, if you want to see more reviews, subscribe. Catch you on the flip side.